And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? And today's topic is, yes, tabloid McNews scandals that are plastered all over the place to keep people from thinking about more important things like uh, maybe they need to be occupying places too or they too won't have a job after a while. One of them is, oh my god, we finally got a pound of flesh and can found somebody to blame for the death of Michael Jackson. Blame his drug dealer, excuse me, doctor. I mean, aren't that what a lot of doctors are, especially psychiatrists? And that, but think about it. Was it the doctor's fault or ultimately does some of the blame, if not a lot of it, rest with Michael Jackson? Just like Elvis, people told him the king of pop, Elvis is king, and a fatal mistake is when somebody like that starts believing they actually are king and surrounds themselves with people who will not say no to the king under any circumstances or they get kicked out of the palace, of course. Won't say no to the king even if they are dying. This can happen to all kinds of people who put out one seven inch that goes for a bunch of money on eBay and consider themselves rock royalty. I have to watch it with myself from time to time. You get to decide if I succeeded. But above all, you start thinking you're king, and sooner or later, the king may be overthrown, especially when nobody will say no to the king when the king is dying. Which brings us to, come on now, we will bring here the fall of an even bigger king, and this does go beyond tabloid McNews here. Come on, shut up. There we go. Joe Paterno. How could this have happened? The last stand-up straight arrow college football coach. His players don't get arrested as often as people, often as players from places like the University of Miami. And oh, these some of them graduated the most boring, ugly, generic uniforms imaginable because he's so humble. Well. I was in State College, Pennsylvania. God, now that's a creative name for a town, ain't it? Clear back in the late 80s, and I've been there since for spoken word shows, and once you get into State College, Joe Paterno was not humble at all. Every gas station, drugstore, diner, and of course collegiate gift shop, you would find statues of Joe Paterno, busts of Joe Paterno, Elvis-sized posters of Joe Paterno, and even cardboard life-size stand-ups of Joe Paterno, one of which I found backstage once and came out on stage for We Interrupt This Program with a Special Bulletin, you know, a message from our sponsor, Stay in your homes or you will be shot, hiding behind the Paterno thing. Great fun was had by all. What really struck me about State College was it was so isolated that even in the late 80s, not only had the 60s not happened, but the 70s and the 80s hadn't happened either, and it was so collegiate. Pat Boone's and Doris Day's everywhere, like nothing I'd ever seen before. Could not believe it. Oh, but what about Coach Joe Pa's legacy? Well, guess what his legacy is now? Oh, he won more games than any other football coach in college history because he was so stubborn he wouldn't retire. He was 84 years old. Of course you're gonna win more games that way. Why didn't they enforce the civil service rules about when state employees have to retire at 65 or 70 or whatever? Because he's the football coach. Therefore, those rules don't apply because no one says no to the king or the football coach. I am gruesomely familiar with this growing up in Boulder, Colorado, where it may be new agey, hippy dippy, but there's also the University of Colorado, another football school with all kinds of violations and still lose games. Players getting arrested, rapist quarterback who instead of going to jail, transfers to the University of Hawaii and sets passing records. Are we starting to set familiar ground here? Then there was the coach who founded the extreme homophobic religious right organization, the Promise Keepers, was paid triple the Nobel Prize winners at the school and got a huge golden parachute when he left. Nobody says no to the king coach God. Unfortunately, I witnessed this firsthand in seventh grade when a friend of mine was dragged outside the locker room in PE and I may have been the only witness to the gym teacher beating the living daylights out of him. Do I report it? Who, the principal? 
They weren't going to listen to me. I was a fat kid with long hair who didn't do good in PE, while this guy was eventually awarded with being principal of another middle school. And part of the reason this hierarchy exists, even in the school system, is because I'm glad there's starting to be sensitivity and awareness toward bullying, but the thing they push, especially in PE, and I'm not sure it's just males anymore, Bullying is actually cool because you have to learn how to get ahead in life. And isn't it interesting how many school bullies later wind up being businessman bullies? And the same goes for encouraging certain kind of wealthier young women to be Heather's types or whatever. It always seems to be the rich kids in the cheerleader uniforms, whatever. Well, one I knew later said, yeah, she was a cheerleader at her school because that was where the best drugs were available. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Anyway, so then we go back to Penn State. Oh my God, there they are losing to another obscene football school, the University of Nebraska. Will they show any fans with big ears of corn on their heads, rooting for their precious corn huskers? Anyway, right after Joe Paterno gets fired to everybody's shock, the preppy Pat Boone on steroids UFC era versions of so-called Nittany Lions, whatever Nittany means, riot in favor of the coach. The riot being, oh my God, they're running down the street against a red light. You know, state college, what do you expect? So, and well, they went tuition at Penn State has gone up 50% in three years, not even a protest from what I'm told. I am glad either student body or some other people took it upon themselves to organize a much larger candlelight vigil for the victims. After all, that is what not the paterno getting fired is not the victim here. Those poor little kids are, which brings us to the question, what about the great big redhead coach who's now hiding outside of town and placed on administrative leave, the one who witnessed the defensive coordinator raping a 10-year-old boy in a shower and was just repulsed and walked away? Walked away? No. You don't just, not even running and calling 911 to get the cops is enough. That was a huge dude. All he would have to do is go into the shower and clock that old man raping the kid and that would be over and he could get the kid out of there, put his arms around him and say, no one's going to hurt you anymore. He didn't do that. Why not? Fear of offending the king, or like some parts of the Catholic Church, was this always acknowledged as just something that goes on everywhere, so it's no big deal? The key is to stop the rape as fast as possible. You know, if he didn't think he was strong enough, which he obviously was, there's blunt objects, there's shoelace or rope to strangle the guy, stop the assault in progress, whatever, something like that. And meanwhile, Paterno, who has not left his house under self-imposed house arrest in what was supposed to be his great riding into the sunset, he's got one big-time famous criminal defense lawyer who used to represent another major gangster, uh, George Bush I, maybe fearing that, yeah, the only banquet circuit he may be doing in his old age is the cafeteria at the state prison. But what, in the long run, should Penn State do? Business as usual, same coaches still coaching the team. Well, this is what the University of San Francisco did when they were a big-ass basketball power and their star player was caught raping a girl in a dorm room. Not just grabbing or whatever, this was a rape. Expelling him from the school wasn't enough. A school, the Jesuits, of all people, Jesuits running the school just said, okay, we want no part of this. We are dropping our big-time NCAA basketball program. We're just going to get rid of it, which they did for the next 10 or 15 years. That is what Penn State should do. This kind of culture has gone too far, and it's not just players selling uniforms to get free tattoos or beating the crap out of people in the community. It's, this is the tip of the iceberg, and the best thing Penn State could do for their reputation and to teach the entire country a real good lesson is to drop the football program completely. After all, when it comes to big time organized sports and the corruption behind it, there are times like this when the real losers are the people who pay to watch.